helpless, scared, trapped. We've seen you devastated, but we've always seen you sacrifice and put others first. We've seen you love from a distance and make a difference to so many lives, overcoming all challenges because that's who you are. It's part of your indelible DNA. It's the one thing that unites us, our spirit, our ability to rise, reach out, to love, to care. Thank you for playing your part and impacting our people's lives because this is what makes us South African. We see you. Everybody and welcome to the Nelson Mandela Children's Film Festival. Today is our last day, which is very exciting because we will be talking about pitching and we have some amazing pictures people will be presenting. However, this morning, I need to let everybody know we had our Lifetime Achievement Awards breakfast and we celebrated Benji Francis and Elizabeth Castle at the Mandela Sanctuary Hotel. It was really quite a special day because each of the invitations came with it handwritten in Nelson Mandela's font. So this was a huge celebration for us. And I want to thank Elizabeth and Benji for their wonderful work in the children's sector for many, many, many decades. And right now I'm ready to listen to the wonderful pictures we've received. So I'm going to check with everybody. Are you all ready? Are you all excited? Are you all a little nervous and scared? <laughs> anyway, here we go. Wolf Wolf, you are on. Please start. Hi, everybody. Um, just going to share my screen here. Um, Balmar will be joining me in a second. Um, but first off, um, hi, my name is Malay. Um, Balmar will introduce himself now. Um, we would like to introduce you to the adventures of Wolf and Wolf. Oh, here's the other wolf. <laughs> um, the Adventures of Wolf and Wolf is a seven-minute episode, a seven-minute episode 2D series for kids aged four to seven. And we're looking at 26 episodes of Action Adventure, which is underwritten with a social emotional undertone. We'd like to transport you to a small African coastal town where seven-year-old Wolf, together with his imaginary friend, shows kids how to turn big emotions into personal power when they go on courage building and challenging action filled adventures. Supported by the emotic crew of after-school friends, the duo turns solving problems into imaginary play with their favorite toys, their wire cards. These distinctively African toys play a huge role in our play pattern from when the friends go um, play with them in the real world to when they become their life-size um, action vehicles during imaginary play. The first wire car we get to know is an off-roader. Um, it's a short little off-roader, just like it's an its owner, our main character Wolf. He's most like a James Bond or a, a Crocodile Dundee type figure. Um, he solves the problems. He's also the um, the one initiates the problem solving um, techniques. Um, it's fun, it's funny. No. Um, but what is one of his secrets always been to calm and confident? It's having his Piri, who is his favorite um, toy, his toy doll in the nook of his arm with him most of the time. She's his springboard and also his um, confidence. So when reality is pushed into an imaginary um, uh, direction, um, Pity comes to life with this Oprah-like fearlessness and um, the curiosity of Hermione Granger. Together, Wolf and Pity are the brawn and brains of each episode. Um, we also have a secondary cast, which is led by Sibu, the anxious lion, who is always the one who um, alerts the friends to the problem. And then we have our meerkats, Talita and Wedi, our monkey Logan, our shy giraffe Mufuyo, and our smart little creative mouse Peyton. Our vibrant African coastal town offers um, many opportunities for high volume of episodes, um, such as locations as the uh, bordering game reserve. We've got a spazzle shop. We've got the, the harbor. The list goes on. 
Um, so we've uh, got one um, pilot episode as well as five um, uh, episode outlines um, for our episodes. Our pilot episode, The Lyrical Lantern, is all about um, facing your courage, facing your fear of the dark, building your courage to face fear of the dark. Um, uh, each episode takes our viewers on a fun-full journey from getting to know each episode's emergency told by an, in, a, in a hilarious way by Sibu the Anxious Lion, who is, uh, buzzes like an over-caffeinated toddler, to an exciting musical transition from the real world into the imaginary world. And to watching their friends save the day in now their giant life-size wire cars. Our strongly formatted episodes um, are filled with heart and comedy and a strong yet not overt theme of confidence building. This takes us to our statement of intent, which is creating the building blocks for emotional resilience in kids from a young age with tools built into each episode. As the creators of the show, it's myself and Malay. We come from the, the live side of um, filmmaking. Um, Malay is a costume designer and I'm a production designer. And together in our team, we've got Minds Eye Creative as our animation team and then Nachflug as our uh, facilitating production house. Uh, we also own a, a kids' company, Wolf Wolf, uh, which now sells the merchandise uh, for our animation series on uh, South Africa's largest online retailer, Teclot.com. And we are also in development with our wire cars and our soft toys, <laughs> um, which we hope to have soon. Um, the budget we're looking at is about 3.2 uh, 3 million euros for 26 episodes. And we are looking for development as well as production. And we are very open to co productions as well. So come along. And we'd like you to share the adventures of Wolf and Wolf and the excitement of a South African childhood. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. And next, Cabello. I told my mom that she was invading my personal space. And I in turn said, you came out of my personal space. Good afternoon. I am Dr. T. And I am Cabello. We are a real life mom and daughter duo and the creators of the mom and daughter cleanup crew. Mm -hmm. Superheroes with an unusual mission. Inspired by the power of empathy, a mom and daughter superhero duo clean up messy misunderstandings between mothers and daughters with the occasional father and son using their special body swapping ability. Mm -hmm. And every mission is a test of the true strength of their empathy. Mm -hmm. It's 26 episodes, 24 minutes each, mm -hmm. adventure, superhero, comedy, and it's for kids and family. Of course, it's 2D and it's actually an episodic show with some serialized elements. Um, the story is set in a modern uh, neo South Africa where it's a very busy world where family members are isolated doing their own thing. So mm -hmm. it's no wonder that parents and kids are struggling to relate. Mm -hmm. And so with their unique power of uh, their body swapping power, mm -hmm. Ma and Reddy are just the right superheroes mm -hmm. to restore these strained relationships. Let us look at the character starting with Ma. She's a natural born leader and strategist. She loves being a mom and doesn't want that to change. She's a woman of style with, and never gives up. Very quick to jump in to solve a problem. But that quickness makes her very impatient. Ma loves order and structure, which means sometimes seeing things only one way, her way. Whereas Muredi is a technology genius in a league all on her own. If only she could find where she left her screwdriver. <laughs> um, she really wants to prove that she can be independent. That's mm -hmm. why she's always making new fantastical gadgets and machines for every mm -hmm. mission, like the vacuum on her arm. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, she does struggle with self-doubt and she fears that she will never measure up and be as put together as her mom. Which is not true. <laughs> and then we have Tanika, the technology navigation and communication assistant mm -hmm. who is a very bubbly and naive AI. Mm -hmm. She is always trying to be helpful. She is another one of Moretti's uh, brilliant inventions. Mm -hmm. Tanika thinks she has emotions, mm -hmm. but she really doesn't. Mm -hmm. So um, she has this offbeat timing that places Moretti in an awkward position. Um, I'm the director of the show. Dr. T is a producer, and we run Cablo Studios here in Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And our experience comes from medical animation, doing short films and winning various awards with that. As 
as well as some educational initiatives we've done in South Africa. Uh, uh, we have an estimated budget of about around 5 million for this uh, series. And obviously, we know that this will change based on the broadcaster that we get into a uh, partnership with. And uh, the exciting thing is that we have secured development funding from the NFVF uh, of about 24,000 uh, uh, euros or 400,000 uh, South African rands. And there you can also see some of the things that we're doing to raise funding for this exciting series. Yeah, like baking, Dr. <laughs> He loves to bake, so we use it to raise funds. <laughs> um, so now that we have funding, we're actually working towards our pilot episode, where the first episode um, happens in Limpopo province in South Africa. We like to take iconic elements like the traditional dancers and put them in the scene or the donkey cart and give it a futuristic design like what you see on the bottom right there. And we've also started preparing our character designs for animation, the technical drawings. This one is Ma's drawing, um, Moretti's drawing, and then Tanika. And now we're working towards the final art style of the show and some of the important locations. This is the headquarters where you can see Moretti's chaotic as usual and Ma's cleaning up after her messy daughter. Um, when they suit up for missions, Ma's very elegant and organized and fabulous, whereas Moretti is kind of scrambling to find bits and pieces of her outfit <laughs> before they can even leave for a mission. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we can't leave out the swap. That's the most fantastical element of the show mm -hmm. um, and it happens in every episode mm -hmm. and then whenever they succeed in a mission they always fly off into the distance the same way they came mm -hmm. with their washomatic which is like their batmobile mm -hmm. and it has uh it leaves a trail of pink bubbles as it flies off into the distance it's a very colorful um show mm -hmm. and really why the story we're showing healthy mom and daughter relationships it's a fresh take on body swapping mm -hmm. as a superpower mm -hmm. and it's inspired by real life which it makes it authentic mm -hmm. and we're also showing african girls as superheroes mm -hmm. so with that please enjoy our test animation <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do I just get going? I'm just trying to get this thing to move down. Okay. So does so I just continue? Yeah. Yes, please, please. Sorry. I'm just trying to get this thing to go away here, but I don't know how to move it out of the way. Which thing is in your way? Uh, can you see it on the mute button stop video? No. All right. Now, then I can go ahead. All right, then. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name Welcome. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Claudia Noble-Aref, and I'm the producer of a series called Nelson Mandela's Favorite African Folk Tales. Oh, um... I want to go to our next screen. Um, our company is called Noble Pictures, and our mission is to bring children's stories um, across the world, and starting off, of course, with uh, Just Right here in South Africa. And we have been trying to um, uh, do this Nelson Mandela Spoktail thing now. It has been a seven-year journey for me, and it was absolutely wonderful for us to launch the project on Nelson Mandela's Day and have a situation where we could share Nelson Mandela's favorite stories with 87 children from the nearby um, community in our area. So we um, started off uh, this book. It is called Nelson Mandela's Favorite African Folk Tales. It's actually a book that was produced and has won uh, awards as such as the NAACP award and has worldwide distribution. It's not just a selection of African folk tales. They're actually stories that were personally selected by our most beloved hero, Nelson Mandela himself. 
stories that were told to him as a boy when he grew up in the village of Punu about the history and folklore of the South African, uh, African continent and which has formed and shaped him into the man who has become a beloved hero and remembered until today by so many people in our country and across the world. It is a children's drama that thus adapted from folktale is our genre. Our target audience are children between the ages of four and 12. I know it's very wide, but we found like, you know, we have children in our family, four years old and 12 years old, and they are, both of them enjoy watching the animations. And so we said, well, let that, that be our target market. Our format is a television series with 30 episodes and our duration is 22 minutes. We have completed, um, as Bordeaux mentioned earlier, we were very fortunate to complete a, a pilot episode called The Mantis and the Moon. And that a folk tale uh, showcased at the Nelson Mandela's Children Film Festival in 2018. And we're so proud that uh, this year, our other uh, animations that we have completed, uh, further five episodes, were shown at festivals across the world through Film Freeway, uh, have been officially selected and won over 15 awards for best animation as well as a smaller category awards. So the, um, these, the five of those are the Sultan's daughter and um, where the young uh, Sultan has to go out and prove that he's worthy to become the next leader in his, uh, in his uh, town. And he obviously goes and experiences an adventure on the way that children would enjoy watching. We then have the lion hair and Dahina, and this story takes place in Kenya about a friendship between the lion and, 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 and the hare and of course, Ahina is always trying to cause trouble, but the friendship in the end of the day is what wins um, everybody's hearts. And then we have the Cloud Princess because we also wanted to have a heroine and, and she is our heroine in this story and she has magical powers and she comes from another world and her father wasn't happy that she fell in love with an earthling. And that's what we say, we are more the same than we are different because in this, this particular story, we show children that it doesn't matter what your backgrounds are, you are still the same and you can still love each other and take care and have kindness towards each other. And then we've got Fasito goes to the market. Um, it's about little Fasito who had to prove that if, when his father was injured, that he was could be a strong man and still be able to do his duties to the, for the family and take the bananas off to market and sell them. But of course, along the way, he meets up with some bullies and he's got to prove that despite the... Um, Bullies being nasty to him, that he was showing them kindness and that he could bring these bananas to market and help others along the way as well. So it just shows children how to deal with bullying and then also that kindness in the end of the day is what will win. And then we have the snake chief and we also have a heroine in this story where um, the chief is looking for a, a, a wife, but um, he goes to the San Goma to find out if he could please not be recognized so that these ladies don't just want to be his uh, his his wife they his, want to be his wife because of his position as a chief, and uh, so the son Goma is actually quite evil and changes him, him into a snake, and then he meets our, our young heroine and she takes him on an adventure to find his way home and and to get back his chieftain's um, ship. So those are the six that have finished. But what is what we were realizing as we completed these individual short stories that we actually need a link these folk tales together because they are all from different countries, all with different characters, and what will make a child come and watch the next episode. And so we've been putting together and developing what we are calling our framing story around the life of little Nelson. So our logline for this is a young boy growing up in rural Transkei discovers how the myths and legends of Africa can transform his simple everyday life into a better world. And from these stories, he learns the moral attributes that will transform him and his country into becoming a new legend for our current times. So basically, in every episode, Nelson, as, as in the book, is told a story by one of his elders or by his mom. And then that story, he then adapts to a situation that's happening in his in his day to day life and learns a valuable lesson from that. The world of our framing story is the village of Kunu, where Nelson Mandela grew up, and we were thinking of doing that in 3D. And then the world of the folktales will depend on where the folktale comes from, like one of the folktales that we currently have is in Uganda, another one is in Kenya, another one is right here in KZN. So the framing story characters, we obviously have Nelson. Nelson can't resist shaking branches to see what will fall out, even if this means trouble, 
named the troublemaker for a good reason. He is physically fearless and moves with agility and ease through his surroundings. He is intelligent, lively, and inquisitive. Fazili, Nelson's best friend, he is uh, large with his feet and ears. Is like a puppy who hasn't yet grown into his body. In stark contrast to his best friend, he is clumsy and uncoordinated, which is a great source of amusement to all, and he often gives in to the temptation to play the clown. But he's this, this lovable ca uh, uh, character that all the children will fall in love with. And then we have Gadla, who is Nelson's father. He's a proud man and an ardent traditionalist. He is a stern disciplinarian with immense dignity and excludes an easy sense of authority. And then we have Nelson's mommy, Nosikeni, is pretty, graceful, gentle, and vivacious. She's Gadla's third wife and gets on well with all the others. She oversees the children with a kind but firm hand, and Sama always knows what N Nelson wants to hide from her. And then we have Nelson's sister, Lewi. She is shy, skinny, and quiet. She's very serious with big eyes that watch everything going on around her. She's tidy and neat, sees herself growing up to be like a mother, and she helps her obtrusively and willingly and worships her elder brother, Nelson. And then, of course, we have the antagonist, <laughs> and he is big and a strong boy. He is prone to being bullying the others who are younger than weaker than him, but he is largely hides his insecurity. He's not very clever at school and unsure of how to behave and knows where, and not know exactly where he fits in. But, of course, we will help him too, because when he is comfortable and confident, he can be a staunch and loyal friend. And so we'll see his journey throughout the episode as well. Budget and funding, $2.5 million is what we're looking at. We have um, the DTI, which gives us a 25% tax rebate in South African spending. We have the National Lottery Board, who assisted us with our very first episode. The NAVF, who has also helped us throughout um, our journey and has now also given us some marketing money for the uh, project. And then we also had the K Kuzula Natal a film commission which gave us the bulk of our money in order for us to produce the five episodes that we have recently finished. And and these are, are what we could possibly bring to the table at the moment because there are 24 folk tales that we still need to animate. And of course, the framing story is to bring in the framing story for all uh, 30 episodes. And I'm just trying to push my button for the next one. And it seems like my computer has decided to be a bit stuck. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, the KZN Film Commission funded the five episodes, as I said, and then we've got six folk tales which have already been finished, so we actually bring into the table a value of six million rand. I will show you now a little, uh, if I still have some time, I just need to move you guys over. This is my anime. Ah. So Nelson Mandela um, had said, um, that, and so it is our mission to make a reality his dream when he said, it is my wish that the voice of the storyteller will never die in Africa, that all of the children of the world may experience the wonder. And knowing that Nelson loved the children, this is our mission to ensure that children from all over the world could see our stories and share in his life. Mm. And I'm having a difficulty just going on to the next screen, guys. Just forgive me. But the next screen really was just a picture of Nelson with the children. So uh, I am actually really confused. Why? Are you managing? No idea. No, it just just wouldn't just take me to my next screen. Oh, there we go. Oh, there, there we are. are. There's yeah. uh, Nelson Mandela with all the children of the world. And then just my contacts, so we are the producers, Claudia Noble, and uh, just to show that we are a team that have all won awards and that are willing to work with any co-producer to complete all our 30 stories in, with the framing story to bring these stories to the children of the world and realize Nelson's dream. Thank you very much. <coughs> <laughs> Technical issues. <laughs> Thank you very much, Claudia. Wonderful. 
Now we come to Cecilia. Cecilia, welcome, my dear. Introduce yourself and your project. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, my name is Cecilia Yading. I'm South African Swedish. I am a scriptwriter and director and producer. And I am here from Sweden. <laughs> and I'm here to present a short film animated um, a script that is called Maggie. I have not made a pitch deck since it's just uh, recent, this script, So, but I will tell you about it and a little bit backstory so you understand why I wrote it. So basically Maggie is an, 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 uh, an animated short that I wrote about my mother who grew, who grew up during apartheid in South Africa. The short is based on stories that my mother used to tell me about her life while growing up in, um, uh, where I grew up here in Sweden. And so she left South Africa due to her activism and was forced to leave as she won awards for being the best nurse student and also due to the fact that she wanted to help elderly non-whites uh, that were forced to earlier work in, in the mines. In, uh, the story starts off with her childhood where we can follow her inner dialogue as she faces different events such as how her community um, cr uh, created their own rules, for instance, when it came, comes to uh, when men beat women. The story continues with events that show how racism impacted on her family and the rights to health care, the rights to freedom of expression, the right to education. Uh, but the story is also about the resolution and integrity that many non-white South African families uh, developed as a way to survive in a very harsh society. Uh, um, I have not told the worst stories here, as my wish is that youth will be able to see it and get a sense of what they went through in a gentler way that is more suitable for that age group. And my target group for the film is 10 to 18 years old, but I'm very aware that animations today is now a genre that cuts through the generation, generational gap. Uh, for instance, I still enjoy watching animated films with my younger nephew. Um, and I really loved what you showed as well. This was very interesting to to see. <laughs> um, the story continues by telling the life outside of South Africa, where she decided to go back to Africa, despite having the chance to live in Europe and live another life. She was a nurse and her calling was to help others. And she found her mission in Congo and uh, as one of her highlights in her career. She met my father there and later decided to live in Sweden. In 1987, was she asked to train the ANC in the north of Sweden, in the city of Kramfors, and that's actually where I'm from. Uh, and she decided to do this, even though she knew that the South African police observed her every movement. The secret police threatened many from the South African diaspora. This did not only happen to us, but this was what I wanted to portray to show how her feelings as a young mother and how it must have felt for many other South African uh, uh, activists in the diaspora. So this was a trauma in our family, but she never told me this until I turned 18. So she, she, she had nobody really to talk to about it. She wanted to protect us and did not want us to feel unsafe in Sweden. So she took a risk to do this, of course, as you may know, our prime minister, Ulf Palme, had just been murdered in 1986. And she was always mentioning that this could have been committed by the South African police. She knew that the, that the Swedish government had plans to create a democracy out of South Africa during a time when the regime had no plans to let this happen. Furthermore, the story ends with telling the tale of being African diaspora in Sweden, as she noticed also that racism impacted our country here. She did become the first with African diaspora to be nom nominated as the second runner-up <clears throat> for the European Parliament. She would have done great work there, but unfortunately did her illness choose another path for her. She used to always say that her mother never got to see a democratic South, African, South Africa, but she did. And she was very proud of that and, and what she did uh, for South Africa. So this is, that is why the story ends where it started to commemorate her life. My vision is that the short film will become an animation where the colors are used to portray certain events, either as, po as a positive experience or, the negative, or a negative one. When it comes to the positive experience, I wish that the colors are positive and bright, but when there are negative experiences, I want the short to have darker versions of the, of the colors or grayer versions of the colors. I have, uh, as you have noticed, used animals 
as the voice of reason and voice of morality, but also as a way to make the story lighter, lighter for, for, the, for kids. Uh, I hope you enjoyed reading my script and I look forward to answering your questions. And by the way, my budget for this was 60,000 euro. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cecilia. Thank you. <laughs> and now we have Phoebe. Yolanda, you will help us with Phoebe's uh, share, her, share the screen. Okay, Phoebe, you can start. Did we lose Phoebe? She's talking for doubts, but I think she might still be muted. Okay, Phoebe, just check. You might be muted, dear. Ah, there you are. Please start again. Is it just me that can't hear? No, we're not hearing no, her. No, yeah, she, yeah, oh, we can't she hear. Must be muted. Something wrong with her sound. No, but she's, yeah. it, it doesn't. It doesn't look like she's muted. Um, I think there's just something wrong with her sound, which is a bit funny because she was fine uh, oh, in the yeah. beginning. Yes, mm. Phoebe, can you hear us? You can hear us because I've had a problem with my sound. Okay, let's let's allow Phoebe to get her sound sorted out. Yolanda, are you ready? Can we go to you? Will that will that be okay for you to move? Yes, from that's a, that, to that's okay. Um, Thank let me you. just share my screen. Maybe I don't know why we can't hear you. Maybe Bash can help us in the background whilst we get uh, Yolanda, and then we'll come back to you, Phoebe. Thanks, Yolanda. Okay, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. Sorry, my dear. Yes, sorry about that. Um, all right. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, but I cannot see. Present. I can't. Uh, um, can, something's can on top see. of it. I can't. Okay, we let me try that again. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Apologies about that, everyone. Uh, just uh, a few technical uh, glitches there um, with what my screen looks like. Um, I'm now not sure if everything is on the screen. Yes, we okay, can. There we go. Yes. Okay, there we go. There we go. Good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, my name is Ulana Kibutsum Patusi, and I will be presenting the project in this gift of the ocean. Lula's Gift of the Ocean is a 2D animated series of 26 episodes of 11 minutes each. Um, it is for four to six year olds and it is a fantasy adventure underneath the sea. But first, the story. Meet Lula. Lula is an inquisitive, um, energetic, and really a young girl with a big, 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 big imagination. Lula loves, loves her big puffy hair, but she hates the ocean. 
problem is, however, she lives very close to the ocean and her mom frequently takes her to the beach, which she does not like. But one day, her mom convinces her to put her toes in the water and then her feet into the water and then her knees. And before she knows it, Lula is all in and she is frolicking and just completely enjoying her time in the ocean. When she gets back home, however, she's reminded of why she hates the ocean. Her hair is just an oceanic mess. She is very, very upset. I am never, ever, ever, ever going back, she tells her mom. And mom says, don't worry, it'll sort itself out. One day she arrives with a pair of snorkels as a gift for Lula. Lula is intrigued. She puts the snorkels on and all of a sudden, Lula, the ocean explorer, is born. Lula's gift of the ocean is about how a reserved little girl conquers her fear of the deep ocean little by little with each underwater adventure that she takes using her big imagination and her enchanting snorkels. On her adventures, Lula meets her best friend in a baby whale shark called Wandi. Wandi is the smartest little baby whale shark in the sea, but he is very much afraid of the darker parts of the ocean. And you know this when he starts to sing because he's nervous. His singing attracts an unlikely uh, part of the trio in Kudo the Parrotfish. Now, Kudo thinks she is just the Miss Universe of the ocean. She is so hedonistic and thinks she's the prettiest thing, the best thing since seaweed. So she just gets the trio in trouble a lot of the time with her selfish acts, which then causes them to have caught with Medusa. Now, when they sent to Medusa, um, she is not as scary as her name suggests. No, she's not at all as scary as the legends um, uh, has uh, taken her. And um, she is actually quite a fair judge of uh, Ulwa, and she has a soft spot for Lula. She, uh, when Lula has passed all of her tests and she has learned to take care of the ocean and to respect it, she then gives Lula powers to go from ocean explorer to uh, super mermaid where now Lula has uh, an extra or a uni fin and she can navigate the ocean and the water just like all of the other fish and she's also emboldened in her body and then the last character is Wangle the deep ocean sometimes Wangle is stormy sometimes Wangle is calm but all the time Wangle is full of adventure the world of the story is set in the magical world of Ula. Ula is designed like some of the best reefs, coral reefs all over the African continent, like the ones we have in Sotwana and in Mozambique, Zanzibar. And really, it is a world full of color and um, full of wonder. It's a little bit set up like the Lion King in terms of the tribunal and the community set up where the fish hold court with uh, Queen Medusa whenever there is trouble. And then Lula is a bit like um, Adora the Explorer underneath the ocean when she goes on each of her different adventures, um, learning about new sea animals, learning about different rules underneath the water and really learning to respect it. Now, why the story and why now? Now, this story was inspired by my own um, ocean adventures when I first learned how to uh, dive. Firstly, yes, uh, my hair changed, which was uh, a bit of a shock uh, from a nice big puffy effort to what you see now. And, um, and yeah, um, just with the character, it was also a bit of a struggle for me with that change. But once I was down there, and I was down there a lot more frequently now because, well, what more could happen to the hair? Um, I was a little bit saddened at, I was, what I saw was wonderful and was all inspiring, but I was also saddened just um, at this privilege that supported to so few people. Um, I just felt like so many more people have to see what, what, what lies underneath. And I noticed that a lot of African kids really have um, trouble, uh, just have a big fear of the ocean. And I do think indeed kids need to be very, very careful with large bo bodies of water. Um, but the fear was very weird. It was almost like, ooh, scary, scary, scary. And I think it maybe stems from the stories that we hear growing up about, ooh, you know what lies underneath the water, any large pool of water, any African person is like, no, you know, something lurks underneath there. But I think, you know, um, what makes the story so current and so urgent is also um, with what we have saw in the pandemic, 
how we need to learn how to be, take better care of our world. And I mean, with global warming and its different effects, it's so vital to teach kids indeed to uh, respect the natural world and to respect our oceans so that they grow up indeed uh, with this um, conservation mindset um, from the very beginning and learning indeed to live um, peacefully indeed with the natural world and to take care of it because it is ours to take care of. Um, and just moving very quickly over the business of the series, uh, we've really received a little bit of money to start with our arts and the story, uh, as you've just seen. And we're looking to raise about 1.5 million euros or 25,000, 25 and a half uh, million rands, actually, um, to complete the rest of the series and to also just give our overall look. Um, yeah, just to kind of wind up the the the. the, the the style a little bit. We are looking at an integrated marketing approach with the story as we have with some of the other um, animated projects where we have different bits where um, like with our previous project called Rapulani, we've got a book then we turn that into an animated book. We've got a game and a merch and we definitely are looking to do that with Lula's Gift of the Ocean um, and doing a really interesting kind of interactive game underneath the ocean uh, where we have different touch points for kids and, um, and parents really and educators to interact with the project and its ideas. My current team and partners, I'm very big on collaboration, um, including Dubai Studios and k &M Studios. And my producer collaborative is Dominic Dressy. And of course, I'm the creative director and the writer and producer of the series. And yeah, thank you very much. Wow, that was beautiful. Wow. So I've asked Besh to see if he can show Phoebe's video. Besh, are you able to show it? He says he can't download it. Oh, oh dear. So what, what Phoebe did have was uh, a video which would have given us the presentation. Yolanda, may I ask you to, to show us Phoebe's presentation again? And if needs be, we can just read through it. Phoebe, let's try if we get your sound. Do you want to try one more time? Let me see. Okay, Phoebe, will you check the chat? But let's see Kalogendo's journey. And we could read it. His trauma gets healed due to care and kindness. Uh, a visual drama story, which Phoebe has written. and. The story is really, um, there she's got it, the log line. Kalogenda flees from his country after his entire family is brutally murdered during the genocide war. He finds refuge in a neighboring country, Uganda, which soothes his agony. Synopsis, it's 1994 and this part of the world is on fire. Kalogenda, a 60-year-old man, has just lost his entire world, reeling from shock, horror, and, a, and acute grief. He must flee his homeland as carnage and violence whip his very hills. He must seek safety. The old man is in flux. He does not know which way to go. He has never ventured far from his village. He is in turmoil. He remembers somebody mentioning, mentioning Akahera. He decides to follow the river while hiding and avoiding marauding groups of torturous people through his body though his body is weak his spirit is strong through bush land swamps a lake and a forest he finally crosses the border eventually landing on a small island a fishing village tentative exhausted and famished he approaches the first homestead he sees Kalahendo is a stranger in this new land hallowed and a shell of a man he must rebuild a semblance of a new life it is not easy for the ghosts and nightmares still linger, jumping at shadows and avoiding company. The fragile bond he has with a newfound foster family slowly enables him to let down his guard, though he is still very weary. With his varied practical skills, Kalohenda begins to meld within the fabric of the community, and bit by bit, he begins to cope and address the effects of his trauma. Kalohendo never goes back to Rwanda, 
He adopts Uganda and his people as his own. The theme, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Now, I was very interested in this project. Um, and, and you can go through the, um, the character Bible and the color palette, just so that we can have an idea of whom Halukhenda looks like. Uh, these are some of the images of the village, a rural setting. And there are biographies. I will be the producer and Phoebe is the director. And as I said earlier, I was intrigued by the story because Phoebe actually tells the story. It reminds her she grew up in this village where a foreigner had arrived at the village and how the community had really consoled him, taken him in and made him part of their, of their home. So as a child, she remembers her aunt or the elders being really kind to a foreigner. And it was in that context that she wanted to tell a story. Uh, of course, doing research, we know what had happened in Rwanda in the very recent past. And so she talks about the person having fled Rwanda because of the genocide and arriving in Uganda. And even though he did not have the language of the people, the people have embraced him. And so this is the story that she tells. Thank you so much. Um, there is the budget. The total is $150,000. Phoebe, I'm sorry that I've had to um, paraphrase for you. I hope that was okay and that it gives everybody a sense of what the story is about. And now I hand it over to the experts as we start with Beth, Leonard and Amina. Well, I can start. Uh, thank you very much. I'm Beth Carmona from Brazil. I run a festival, the name is Con Kids, and uh, we are here to, to share, to, to, to see what else we could do together in order to develop and to produce those fantastic projects. Well, uh, I, I know I have just a little bit of time, so it's difficult because I have so many things to say how amazing are all the projects and how good they are. Uh, my speciality is anima is not only animation, but also uh, live action with children and youth. So uh, I will start with the animation projects and I will leave the two uh, feature films, uh, the, the, the feature film uh, for the other experts. And so about Yolanda project, the Lula, I really found amazing and uh, and it's really, it, it, we see that came from uh, a writer, uh, someone that has experience in create characters. I love the design uh, and it's so true, uh, the experience of a child in, in water, uh, the first experience is really a very important moment. And I think it's, it's, it's amazing to have a story based on that. And all the, the hair and the way she transforms uh, uh, and how she fights with the fear when she is underwater uh, as the superpower came as a mermaid and all the wonders and things, curiosities that she found down the water. Uh, but I would love, and if I can suggest something, uh, it always comes to me, the situations of the oceans nowadays, the situation of the reef and all the things that are happening uh, related to the future of the planet. So if there is some episode or if there is some story that we could find a little bit of a, a, a sense of what is going on or a, a, an issue about the environment and the ocean, in some of the episodes and part of the story, I would think that the project will also uh, could gain a little bit of more interest. This is my suggestion, but the project is already, you know, something that is a, a very good. Uh, the cleanup uh, crew, it's fantastic. I was, it was amazing, the idea 
uh, it's also uh, so nice to see that all the style of the animation, it comes to me very, very modern, very contemporary with all this, I would say that uh, 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 age, age key style, but also the anime style, which is something that is gaining uh, uh, all the world, which I found very, very quick and nice a way of, of narration and telling stories. And uh, the, the, the situation of, uh, of the, not the situation, but the way she shows the, the, uh, the story, Afro-futuristic appeal, and also the reinterpretation of this village, which is a real village, uh, which is uh, by the style and the aesthetic transform in an in a Afrofuturistic uh, uh, place. Uh, it make it uh, very, very real and very close to the audience, I think. And, uh, and uh, I really enjoy the originality of the story and the fresh way to present the relationship between mother and, and daughter. And uh, really, it's something, you know, very fresh. Uh, related to the wolf and, and pity, uh, again, very original uh, uh, style. And it seems a little bit based on draw from children uh, sometimes. Uh, but again, when it comes uh, with the wire cars and this little community, uh, living together a daily life with their uh, adventures, a uh, mix of science and technology, but with a very simple, simple design and style uh, based, again, on a real community. It's unbelievable how much uh, uh, an animation can uh, uh, be uh, strong uh, when it comes uh, uh, related to a place that is a real world that you can uh, 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 be inspired and adapt to an animation story. So really, uh, that also the feelings, you know, the, the idea of dealing with feelings for preschool and how to deal with your feelings, how to uh, build a self-confidence and all this uh, uh, subjects and themes that are so important right now for this age group. I think it's really, really nice. Um, and about Claudia and all the folk tales and uh, the little Nelson uh, project. Well, I think uh, folk, folk tales are always something uh, uh, that uh, we need is the, the, the stories, the kind of stories that uh, will uh, belong forever. And, uh, and I really congratulate her for so many already produced. I think it's something that in the market can have some appeal. And, uh, and, uh, and let's see uh, how it goes. I, I would need a little bit more information about how the development of Little Nelson. And I'm really uh, uh, very uh, impressed by the story of uh, Cecilia, the, the story of her mother, the animation piece that she is uh, putting together and she's developing about the story of his mother. I really felt very emotional about uh, how uh, she is connected with the story and how important, not only for her, but for the world uh, to tell this story with his, uh, her personal feelings. So uh, I would love to see more of the style and how he's going to uh, uh, continue the project. And I will leave the, the feature film for uh, my partners, okay? And, and I hope to to be in touch with you and see which ideas we could come to bring those stories, at least to the Brazilian audience, for, for the Latin American audience, to share and also to co-produce. Thank you, Le thank you, Beth. Lennart? Can I? Yeah, thank you, because I need to go in 
in five minutes, I think it is. Uh, I have a train to catch. Uh, thank you very much for the pitchings. I think they were uh, fantastic, very well done, uh, even if there are these technical glitches that we, we all know about in this hybrid world <laughs> so we just we just cool off and i think it was well done and uh, uh, uh since beth has commented make this comment about the, the animations and uh, the uh, the calogeda's journey is if if that's the only feature uh, there is is of course kind of in a tricky as you said a few those it's in a tricky land when it comes to children perspective different depending on who is telling the story is it Caligendo or is it the girl on the island, uh, the the uh, the uh, the writer? So, uh, but it's it is a story that is very uh, emotion and uh, not emotion. It's very it's a very uh, a story need to be told as as Cecilia, as Maggie. As, I mean, it's in kind of in the same in the same relevance. I th- uh, Maggie, if I were say to Cecilia, I think it's that one is, is in a very, very early stage. We have only a script, not only a script, the script is the base, of course. But uh, so it would be interesting to see the development of that. And I was surprised that it was an animation, actually. But uh, I was, uh, hmm, uh, we can talk about that. You can contact me about that. So um, uh, we will select one of the projects. I will keep it short. I, we, I was amazed by all the projects and also the relevance of uh, of, the, of them. And uh, we will select one of them to be to be uh, get a wild card to Embrain because our we are approaching a European distributors and uh, and uh, and broadcasters mainly. So. Uh, that could be interesting for you all, uh, and you are all, of course, also uh, welcome to submit your project to to uh, to Embrain. We we open up in September and close in December. So, but just check out our website. But thank you very much. And uh, uh, was there anything more I have to say? I've written a lot on the paper, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. Uh, and of course, TV series. The broadcasters are looking for TV series. They love it. So that's that's a good thing to know. You are talking their language. Uh, I'm a documentary producer in my bottom, so I'm more more into that kind of stuff. But um, but of course, a good story is a good story. And uh, thank you, Fedos, for letting me be here again. And uh, Beth, who was also we've been collaborating, and it's nice to see you. And it's nice to see you all. And also nice to see a Swedish person sitting there. But. Uh, <laughs> where it's a, the, the world is getting smaller and smaller um so um i'm sorry i had to rush and uh that's what i would have to say so um okay thank you Leonard. thank you very much um don't miss your train but we will continue because we've got everybody now in one email Yes. So if you want anything else you can talk to whomever you want exactly and then repair you know the presentations but everybody can apply to brain and you yeah and you can also one. contact me you can contact yeah. me uh yeah. if you want to i start work for real on monday <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm thank supposed you, to be Leonard. okay thank you very much for have your nice time trip. have a nice thank trip you. <laughs> thank you thank you bye 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 Yes. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, absolutely amazing talent. Thank you very, very much uh, for all your pictures and all your uh, your efforts. And uh, I think every one of these uh, presentations, pictures, uh, will find legs, will find a way of, uh, you know, gracing our screens. I'm just going to start in any particular uh, order, but uh, maybe I should start with uh, Lula. Uh, I also loved Lula. Uh, it's it's absolutely fabulous, and uh, we can relate to it. I don't want to repeat everything, but you know what Beth has said is very very important. You know, link a papsoon issue to an environmental issue. Uh, there might be some trauma that little Lula will experience. You know, like a fish caught in the plastic or something like that, which is very real. Uh, so it's something that you can link, and it's something that you can link to merchandise. You can link to. Um, you know the narrative of what is happening, what we need to do as a as a as a city, as a country, uh, as as everything else. So I think that would be very very interesting. The learning that comes out of it, but love the concept, love the merchandise, and uh, and it's great. In no no particular order, I just like to say Cabello, <laughs> Dr. T and Cabello. I I think that's that's absolutely marvelous, and it's fresh as well. 
uh, it's 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 absolutely absolutely exciting and 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 very much related to realities of life. Um, but uh, my question is. I think you mentioned occasionally there are there are males that uh, get involved, uh, etc. And uh, I would just I don't know watch the gender aspect of it. Uh, we don't live in isolation. This would only be half the population if it's just yeah. It's African women, female heroes. That's fine. That's great. Nothing wrong with it. But uh, I think I hope you have plans to link it to the wider community. Uh, you know to just show the environment uh, that we're in. Um, the Adventures of Wolf, I absolutely love that as well. And uh, I think once again, if you're related to the environment as well, you know, like recycling, upcycling, upskilling, waste recycling. I mean, th th I think that that would absolutely, absolutely be, be good to, to involve a, a feature there. I think there are many characters, but uh, yeah, it's a community. And uh, I, th I think uh, good luck. I, I I love the simplicity of it uh, uh, as well. But but link it link it to the issue. There are lots of possibilities there, and I think it's very very. Uh, it has the African feel. It has the South African township feel as well. So it's 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 got rather unique uh, features. Um, Cecilia, uh, yes, I I I I think Leonard has already said why animation. I think your mom is still alive. Uh, I, I think uh, maybe, no, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, a documentary, uh, uh, you know, aspect would also be very, very interesting. But I, I, it's, it's exciting. It's relevant. It's uh, something very important between North and South. And the role Sweden played in our liberation movement, our liberation struggle as well. So there's that interconnectivity, and I, I would like to see it uh, further developed. Um, who have I left out? Uh, Phoebe, I don't know if you can hear us. Uh, Phoebe, uh, is it Phoebe? Yeah, Phoebe, if you can hear us, uh, thank you very, very much uh, for your pitch. It's something that we can... Uh, relate to as well, especially in South Africa, what has happened here in South Africa in 1994 with our first democratic dispensation. And at the time, you 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 experienced massacres in your part of the world, uh, whole families wiped out. But uh, it's important from whose point of view and actually what happens, maybe a little bit more development through the impact on yourself uh, as, as you know the trauma that you might have experienced and yeah is it is it from which perspective is it told from a child's perspective um very important but i'm sure it it will get uh, it will get feet who have i left out have i left out anybody uh sorry uh, sorry i am rushing through it but i'm really really excited really excited about the talent uh i i've seen i've experienced so beth Great to see you again, and thank you for sharing all your expertise. Uh, Firdos, thank you very, very much uh, for uh, including us uh, uh, in, in this uh, uh, in this pitch, and it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. Amina, it's the Mandela's African Folk Tales from Claudia. Oh, 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 oh my God, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Claudia, is she still there? So you see, she's disappeared from my screen. I hope she's still there. Oh, there's, there's Claudia. Oh, my God. Uh, Claudia, yes, sorry. Claudia, that was absolutely amazing what you've achieved so far, what you've done so far. And I think it's great to have, uh, what do you call it, the, 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 frame, the framework or something like that. I think that's great. It will add to the context and will link and bind everything together. But each one of those stories, they absolutely, you know, will hold anyone spellbound. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It's well developed from what I've seen already. Uh, the character development, uh, the role models, and, and the kind of society that we come from. So very much, very much our African feel, you know, with the Mandela theme as well. And there's so much of that that I can personally relate to as well. So, so good luck. You have already have, you know, I think six part in the series and, and, uh, I, I think it will get feet and arms and legs and 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 just run away all over the world. I I I think there's a lot of potential there. Thank you very much. Sorry that I left you out, Claudia. <laughs> I think it's it's wonderful. I must compliment everyone's talents and everyone's uh, efforts. And uh, good luck, everybody. Well, thank you so much, Beth, Leonard, and Amina. Um, we always appreciate 
you know, your your take on what is happening precisely because you have all been in the sector for so long. Um, all these films are still available on the Durban International Film Festival on the website under the Nelson Mandela Children's Film Festival. Please take time to go and have a look at Claudia's films. They're all there. Um, so you can actually see the animations. I think that is important. Um, and I, I am so excited, uh, Beth, because of what you might be doing next August. So I think the digital space, the, that environment around um, merchandising, animation, gaming, which is what all of them are looking at, really gives us an impetus to say, yes, we always think local, we act local, but then we, we want to be global as well. And we want to know that whatever we are doing will be relatable in other communities. So, and that's what animations, that's what children's stories manage to do. They really transcend these spaces. Um, Cecilia, whilst I know that both uh, Leonard and Amina are documentary film people, I do think if we had a little Maggie, uh, or even a little Cecilia listening to Maggie's stories would be phenomenal because these stories of our elders need to be told and we need to know the diaspora in terms of where the stories are. Um, today, as we celebrated uh, Liz Castle, as I said, and Benji Francis, people were surprised by the diversity. We forget how our stories really impact each other globally, not just in, in South Africa and in our little milieus. So what you all have done is to show us how your storytelling can really travel. And I'm so excited. Uh, the presentations were fantastic. I want to thank you all for your time and for, for giving us the time as the Nelson Mandela Children's Film Festival to share in your limelight as you shine we shine because you've got these wonderful stories to tell we would like to see how we continue the journey with you um we would like you to look at jitendra unfortunately from india also fell off because he's somewhere in a village but you know india has a massive market i mean you're talking about, about billions of people and so when they talk about children watching something we might be a country of 55 or 60 million. They talk about a community of children that are 100 million. So just imagine if that content can move out into those communities. I want you to think about that even as you build the story, just bring in as more people as you can so that you bring in the diversity and stories around the environment, as you all know, because we're looking at global warming, we're looking at what's happening just in our own homes, we're looking at COVID and the impact, all of your stories are relating to those issues and that is really important. So thank you everybody. We really appreciate your time. Uh, let's keep in touch. Let's keep the community you know, going. And if you want to write directly to anybody, please feel free. You know, it's, it's not an ownership, it's really a support mechanism. It's for us to trust each other and to create a family where we can help each other. So I thank you all. Please continue watching films. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for those. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mina. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, nice. Time.